Welcome back to the boat restoration series where I'm converting a 1940 40-foot seaplane tender into a liveaboard. So this is just a short update video, it's not an actual episode. As you guys know, winter is here, uh, especially in Ireland, you know, we get lots and lots of rain for the next coming months, uh, until spring, late spring maybe, maybe in March we'll get some good weather, I could get back into the boat then, you know, so that really means that, unfortunately, uh, the work on the boat is halted for now. Um, but yeah, just don't go unsubscribing suddenly, because I will have new episodes soon. And uh, yeah, just think of it like, you know, some animals go into hibernation, go to sleep for the for uh, for the winter, wake up in spring all refreshed, full of energy, ready to tackle what comes their way. So I guess it's same sort of same sort of technique here, you know. And uh, so, but before I go into hibernation for the next couple of months, uh, my father and I still managed to get some good work done on the chimney. We got the, the stove hooked up permanently. Got the, the piping all, uh, all welded up and uh, even got the, the plate stick welded as well. I got to practice that, so I was pretty uh, pretty proud of my welding skills. I haven't just done it for such a short amount of time. And uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it was good fun. So I tore down the water damaged boards or planks that are stuck up there on the roof. Uh, and just beyond it is the styrofoam. It's just regular styrofoam insulation. Of course, I'm gonna keep it, the rest of it all in there. And uh, I mean, it seems to do the job. You know, it's, it's pretty crazy actually. When you look at the the wheelhouse cabin, you walk straight into the, the double doors at the entrance of the wheelhouse cabin. Uh, especially nowadays, you know, when there's no heat in the boat and there's a, that hole in the bow still. <laughs> you know, you've got condensation, a lot of condensation that's building up on that roof, and it's crazy. Like it's just like it's like it, it'd be raining inside there. Exact. It's really not that bad, but it's a lot. It's surpri It's an a, a surprising amount. That's for sure. And you step down into the next uh, four cabin with those uh, where the styrofoam is. You know, it's just insulated with the styrofoam, and then it's got those planks. You know, you've got no drips going through any of that, so obviously it's doing its job. It's keeping it insulated, and, and the roof planks insulated. And um, so it just goes to show you. I think what we'll do is here we'll just get uh, some styrofoam stuck up in the in the wheelhouse cabin roof, and uh, have that in there temporarily just for the winter. You know, so so water isn't building up and condensation doesn't keep happening. So there was just some mold there on the on the timber where the water was leaking in obviously around the chimney uh chimney hole or the chimney cap and yeah i just made sure to, to bleach that and wipe it down really well and get it nice and dry then and uh yeah for installing the chimney straightforward you know we cut the we did cut the hole bigger we measured it that we would weld the, the steel plate on in place that as we then lower down the chimney it would fit in securely and then just pop straight onto the, the that cap or that angle on the on the actual cast iron stove, the OCIE stove, and that worked out perfectly. You know, we got our measurements done. We made sure our measurements were done <laughs> accurately. You know, measure. I think we even measured more than twice, so probably just to make sure it was a hundred percent.
So as many of you recommended in the comments, uh, was to go with a butyl tape for sealing the chimney um, and for sealing a lot of things when it comes to, to keeping out the water it does the job and uh, yeah so I we used plenty of, of butyl tape got that down there and built a nice barrier and then I just wanted to go with something extra you know to, to guarantee that, that uh, the waterproofness or <laughs> this to be sure that it was secured and it wasn't going to be a, a breach of water and uh, made sure to go with Sikraflex 291i and uh, I just did a few beads around the exterior, you know, on the outside of the butyl tape. And uh, once you screwed down the, the steel plate, it even, it bulged out a nice amount. So you can guarantee that gasket. And then I even used uh, used my thumb, ran my thumb across it and uh, to smooth out the, the sickle flex. And it, it works well. It looks the part. It's strong and uh, it's secured. So that's what that's what you want. And even test running the, the fire, we had the fire blazing. It doesn't take long to get that fire going, that's for sure, with the, the ro rocket rocket stove characteristics it has. And, uh, geez, it, it draws it draws amazing. You get it going, there's, there's hardly any smoke. You don't even know it's actually up and running, you know, when you're burning. You're burning logs, you're burning small bits of timber, you know, about five, seven inch sticks, about that. And uh, it just, it, it's amazing. Um, and how quick you can get the place warm as well, even with the hole in the bow, it, it's always surprising. And uh, so I was worried a little bit about the steel plate and how it would how it would affect the timber uh, if it would get too hot. And really, it doesn't, because you can see, you know, the way we we've even welded the the, the the pipe, the chimney pipe, to the steel plate. You would think it would carry a lot of the heat through. Um, you know, normally, you know, with all these new stoves you can buy and the, and the chimney pipes that you buy with them, they all come with the the second. Uh, are double walled, right, for to be extra efficient and all that. So we were thinking, like maybe we'd even go this route and do a technique where we'd be able to to weld that up. And we just thought we'd give this a shot. And after doing a few tests, it worked well, and um, we didn't need it. And and now, like having the stove blaring, having it on full uh, burn mode, and um, it works. You know, the steel gets a bit like maybe lukewarm at the edges, but but no nothing crazy. Uh, and the timber inside, it gets warm doesn't really it doesn't get to a worrying temperature where you go oh, the the planks might uh, contract too much and I mean I guess only time will tell but uh, I'm happy with how, how it's working so far but what a relief you know it, what a sense of accomplishment also that the, the stove is in you know you can just go, it's, you can light it in no time at all uh, and get it blaring and the place gets warm so that is one other job ticked off the list. So the other day I was on the train and I got talking to a man who works for Irish Rail. And I just asked him if he could provide me with more information about the old CAE stoves, if he knew anything more. And I showed him a short video clip where it has the CAE initials on the sliding door. And he told me that his grandfather worked for CAE in the 1950s. He remembers even seeing the old photographs of these stoves. And I was telling him about like, it's so difficult to find any information about it on Google. You just get a few, few photos and that's all. And uh, yeah, so his grandfather worked for CIE. It was then, you know, the Irish Rail Transport in Rillairn was known as, uh, with the name of CIE, right up until 1994, uh, until the name was changed, of course. And, uh, and he's certain that these stoves are, are built in early 1950s or late 1940s, which is just incredible. So I hope with uh, a bit of sandblasting and a fresh lick of paint that I can get uh, 70 odd years again. <laughs> Another 70 odd years out of the stove, and that be that would be incredible. That would be something. So what an incredible way to to use something so old with uh, such historic value, and uh, put it back in use, back in circulation in a way. Uh, what a great feeling that is. So that will uh, that will be incredible to incredible addition to have on the boat for sure, definitely. So folks, thanks for watching. As always, you know, keep up uh, all the great work uh, yourselves, uh, whatever projects you may be working on. Um, I love to hear about them in the comments as well. And uh, it's great to be able to check out your channels if you guys are uploading videos and, uh, and see what you're all working on. And uh, we can all learn from each other and it's a great kind of community we have here with uh, these channels. It's, uh, it's really fantastic. So as always guys, thanks for the continued support. As always, stay productive and have fun creating.